uh, now looking at Ukraine and seeing the energy in the country in particular is a place to actually move and spend a lot of time in it seems to be going you know obviously not in a straight line not high speed but definitely going in the right direction and welcome to another Vodka Vodcast with me Connor Klein. This is the Zara Experience and very special greeting from Odessa. Mom, it's my first time this summer shooting a vodcast or shooting any sort of video footage down here on the port. Got plenty of people walking around. It uh, hasn't been the best weather uh, in the last week. A little bit unsettled but now the forecast from next week onwards is high summer and it should be high season here in Odessa Mama. It's early July when I'm shooting this. It's about 30 degrees Celsius every day. So pretty perfect weather, not too hot. It was also a little bit too hot last week, even though there was a good bit of rain, you know, with the humidity. Anyways, the topic of today's podcast is 10 things that have changed in Ukraine in the last 10 years and the inspiration for today's vodcast, the topic of today's vodcast is a comment that I read under one of my previous videos from, and I'm just gonna go and find the commenter, Dave Hilton. He wrote, Connor, can you talk about how your experiences in Eastern Europe have changed as you have gotten older? You say you have been out there for 10 years, more than 10 years at this stage, what has changed for you personally over those 10 years? Have things gotten better for you or more challenging? So for today's video, because that's a pretty big topic, obviously 10 years ago, I was not the same person that I am today. And you're probably, well, maybe you're also interested in seeing how it changed for me as I got older. I'm now in my early 40s, obviously 10 years ago uh, when I first started to come, I think I was 30 years of age. The first time was like 12 years ago uh, that I came here. So yeah, it's a bit of a different experience, obviously traveling anywhere in, you know, if you have a decade apart as a person, it does change. So in today's vlog, it's kind of limited to Ukraine since I'm here in Ukraine. I think it's the one that's probably changed the most in the last 10 years. So obviously the one that's probably going to be the most interesting to talk about. And I'm just going to stick to what has changed uh, overall in the country. Um, a little bit geopolitically, a little bit uh, maybe economically, and uh, most importantly, because I know this is why you watch the podcast in general, what has happened on the dating scene if you come here as a Western guy. So just to set the scene, back 10 years ago, uh, Viktor Yanukovych was the present here. And a couple years after that, we had the Euromaidan revolution. I have some podcasts uh, describing, outlining kind of my experience, because actually I was here during the revolution. I was up in Kiev primarily and you know, what that has meant since then. Well, basically uh, the country, I guess overall, you could say has become a little bit more westernized or Europeanized. Definitely the political um, outlook of the country has veered to more towards uh, the West than it was. Uh, Viktor Yanukovych was considered more pro-Russian uh, than pro-European. And uh, that was part of the reason why there was the Euromaidan revolution. But I want to focus on this uh, really on the experience and what has changed, uh, both if you come here for, say, a trip, like you're coming uh, for, say, a week, two weeks, or you're actually planning to move here a bit longer, like maybe three to 12 months a year, as I help a lot of guys with at the moment. This is the most popular uh, country out of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine for relocation. If you're coming from the West, there's been a big uptick in that. Uh, and I see so many more guys that I meet from the West here are actually uh, living here at least three months of the year. It's not a slash and burn uh, trip to uh, hit it and quit it <laughs> with a couple of chicks here or uh, maybe a wife hunter trip. Uh, you see a lot, guys, a lot more guys nowadays than 10 years ago who want to invest more time in being here. When I came the first time, I actually wasn't considering uh, living here and guys who were permanently based here were very, very rare from the West, unless they had like, you know, a diplomatic job. They definitely weren't the more kind of footloose crypto investors. I have another video about the type of Western guys who move here. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll, like all these other videos, I'll reference them by putting down below in the description to the video and up on cards if I have room. So anyways, let's get into the meat of today's video. 
and uh, there will be, you know, a lot of these changes will be a little bit correlate to the one previously. I'm trying to make it a little bit consistent, that way and easier to follow because 10, you know, we could write, you know, if I start talking about 10 in depth, that very different will be here for a three hour kind of a vodcast episode. And I like to keep it down a little bit shorter for you and get you into the bears, the real essentials of understanding. So the first big change that I see here compared to back in 2011 is it looks less Soviet. For sure, and it's that, I mean, that's part of becoming more, I guess, westernized, Europeanized. But even when I go to Russia, you see, you know, a lot of the new stuff is, is a bit similar anyways. Uh, so I think it just looks less Soviet. I mean, we're obviously 10 years later on, Soviet Union collapsed 30 years ago uh, in, two th uh, sorry, in 1991. And obviously we're to 2021, 2021, so it's been 30 years. So 30 years versus 20 years, you definitely see uh, it looking less Soviet. And I don't think that's necessarily in the architecture so much, although they are renovating a lot of stuff here in the historical center of Odessa. I think it's more the way that people dress. And maybe it's not that they look less Soviet because I wasn't here during the Soviet Union. And um, I think it's more that they look maybe less post-Soviet than they did before. And I think a lot of that is to do with Instagram, especially with the girls, the way they dress, and also the guys here. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later in another reason, uh, but definitely the tastes uh, on style and um, also a little bit in the architecture and the infrastructure here, it's less Soviet than it was before. You definitely have moving away from that. Now that's not to say, got a boat there, just pulling into the port. Uh, ferry gonna take people out onto the Black Sea behind me. So I would say overall it looks less Soviet and you definitely have less Soviet nostalgia. I will have other videos about that coming up on the channel about you know how Soviet nostalgia is received. Now of course older people more likely depending on their social class and where they're from the country to probably maybe have more fond memories of the Soviet and maybe dress a little bit more old-fashioned. Well, that's normal anywhere but definitely it feels less. I mean because I said Soviet and post-Soviet together, I think it just, you know, it feels a little less rough overall, I would say as well, because obviously uh, everything collapsed in the 1990s here. And um, while some of it have obviously been rejuvenated, not that much. And I'm starting to see here in Ukraine, especially in the last, I would say two years, in a lot of the cities, a lot of new stuff. So that's, I'll touch on that a little bit later in the podcast, but that's what reason or thing that has changed number one out of ten so let's get into number two so number two is a correlate I think the differences with say European standards for Western European standards in terms of infrastructure restaurants cafes um, you know flights planes trains automobiles everything has reduced quite considerably and that's also you know why it feels less Soviet to me or post Soviet to me is because it started to catch up quite a lot um, and I think just information nowadays moves a lot quicker when something works in one place it can be you know remodeled to fit a new market and I think Ukrainians have been pretty sharp with that also there's a good bit of you know there's starting to be more and more foreign investment especially from further west here also from other countries but in the last year or so but definitely I think the differences are the inconveniences between living here in Ukraine compared to when you know I was just moving to Germany and I've been living in Brussels in Belgium I was actually moving to Munich in the south of Germany at the time and you know it was a huge gulf you know I came here on my trips to Odessa and to, at the time I went to Crimea it's obviously been controlled by Ukraine at the time now it's under uh, de facto Russian um, administration obviously since it's been annexed in 2014 the difference was very very clear and I think that has started to disappear I mean not completely obviously but definitely the gap has been narrowed um, and in terms of what you can get if you come here whether you're coming for a short trip or you're moving here to spend more time maybe invest in real estate and actually live here part of the year you know it's not the huge leap of faith in a certain sense uh, but definitely a huge leap in terms of the living standards and what's available to you if you come here as a foreigner obviously with a certain level of income than it was back then back in 2011 um, and that's part of the reason I know a lot of people can obviously move um, easier because they got remote work nowadays but 
which wasn't possible. It wasn't pop possible for me as a lawyer. I couldn't only dream of at that time actually moving here and actually doing it full time. I did try it in the years afterwards a little bit, um, but definitely it's become a lot more attractive because the things that you wouldn't have been able to get here 10 years ago and the Gulf, say, in um, your quality of life has narrowed quite considerably. And back in 2011, the, it was before, you know, obviously the war Russia started, uh, annexation of Crimea and, you know, the revolution. And just before that, Venezuela's country had economic problems. So the currency, the hryvna versus, say, the dollar and euro, it was completely different. It was hovering, oscillating around one to 10. And today it's like, yeah, it's, it's like maybe 28 to the dollar and 33 to the euro. Now, obviously the prices have gone up quite a bit in Rivna, but at the same time, if you come here from outside and you, especially if you're obviously you're making your money in dollars or euros, then the price level is quite different to what it was back then. So it wasn't just that the things weren't available or the infrastructure was further behind. It's also that everything cost a lot more. So yeah, quality of life, difference between here and there even you know if you said they were the same price it's gotten lower but obviously because of the exchange rates if you have those dollars and euros completely different and that I mean I loved coming here anyways even when I was paying the higher prices uh, back then because it was more expensive back then than it is now even with a bit of inflation in between it's not 2014 prices anymore but it's still a lot cheaper but in any case I still love coming here uh, and but it's got even more attractive. So we'll say that's thing number two that's uh, changed or change number two of the 10. So change number three. And wow, we've talked about how things have improved, but maybe not everything is, something is amiss in the, what is the, the Hamlet quote? Something is amiss in the kingdom of Denmark. <laughs> if I'm quoting, remembering that correctly from my high school days. Yes, some things have changed and they haven't changed all the better for you as a Westerner coming here. And that is your automatic perceived value on, on the dating market with the local mim for being American in particular, but also for being yes, East, Western European has dropped. You don't really get that much automatic perceived value for being a foreigner. Now, maybe you're a neophyte here on the channel, to my channel, and you don't really know what I'm talking about, but basically, in a nutshell, and I have lots of other content, you know, I'll link, of course, a few relevant videos down below in the description again. Basically, if you showed up here with your US passport and your, I don't know, French, German, British passport, British in particular, 10 years ago, you would have gotten, you know, a few looks and you would have been seen as like a more interesting prospect for the local lasses here in Odessa and in Ukraine in general. Now, there was all, this was always Scam Central, I guess, moms. I'm not going to say that scams uh, are, you know, bigger or less, more prevalent or, or less nowadays, because that's actually a little bit hard for me to judge. I think we find out about them more today. And I see that written under some of the other videos. I have the previous podcast about a guy who was scammed out of $250,000 here in Odessa. Recently, go check that out. Um, but basically, if you're coming here and you think, you just have to show up and you're French or you're Italiano or you're, uh, you know, from the deep south. I can't do a certain accent, unfortunately, but whatever you're from. I always pick a Nashville, Jimmy from Nashville, but nothing against Nashville in particular. But if you come from the States, you could be uh, Johnny from New York as well. And you think that the girls are all going to be just dying to meet you because they want to escape Ukraine and get that American passport. That is a lot less and actually it's pretty much like coming here as a foreigner just for being a foreigner don't think it makes a big difference don't think it makes any difference it could actually be a negative here in Odessa or in Kiev there it is you get a little bit tiny tiny bit of extra value for that but that is a big difference with back in 2011 back in 2011 I definitely got a lot more value for being an Irish British guy than I get today just on that uh, alone. So that is a big thing that's changed in the dating market. So if you think you're coming here for the two weeks and uh, leaving with a wife just because you're American or British, uh, not really realistic nowadays. Uh, so don't fall into that trap of leaving those stereotypes about Ukraine and the dating market here. I even remember back, I think it was 2014, uh, I had a buddy who was with me and uh, you know, we used to say he's Frank from Texas. <laughs> and uh, girls were like, oh, Texas cowboy, hee-haw, right? They just 
even that kind of funny reference resonated very strongly uh, and I just don't see it having the same impact today so yes that's probably something that's changed uh, against your interests shall we say when you come here to Ukraine uh, in the last decade now the other thing is um, you know Ukrainian women are of course famed for their beauty women in general are a lot slimmer here if they're under the age of 40 I mean I did look up the obesity stats and overweightness and actually it's it's <laughs> the difference in overweight percentage of people here is not that much lower if you get over 40 in Eastern Europe than it is in Western Europe small difference uh, I have another vodcast now but for sure women under 35 we'll say under 40 in general tend to be a lot slimmer but if you go down Derbaskaya here in the center of Odessa you can see a lot of KFC McDonald's all these fast food joints and a lot of young people in general as well as tourists a lot of uh, girls who are under 30 eating there and that wasn't as prevalent back then I definitely noticed a change in you see more younger people being overweight than you did 10 years and I'm not gonna exaggerate and say that you know this is you know obeseville all of a sudden it's not but it's going that direction and as I said I grew up in Ireland uh, and when I was young obviously I'm in my early 40s so we're talking about maybe 25 years ago uh, 30 years ago people were very slim in Ireland and when I go back nowadays they are overweight there's a lot of fatties that's basically bottom line men and women all ages <laughs> so uh, it can change within a generation and I start to see that here in Ukraine that there definitely is an uptick in younger people and it's, it's not just younger women it's also younger men than 10 years ago but it's still a lot better than you're gonna see in most of West the West basically in general now paradoxically no, I wouldn't say paradoxically but conversely to that there is an uptick in the number of women who actually and men in general who take an interest in their health here this was not what I saw you know 10 years ago whatsoever people were slim because they didn't eat too much but they weren't very fit they weren't going to the gym but nowadays you see a lot more younger Ukrainians going to the gym uh, you go out here on to uh, you know near the seaside you'll see a lot of guys and girls working out just for free and the stuff and obviously the gyms have exploded in terms of attendance so it's yeah I guess it's paradox that we see more younger people being a bit plump but at the same time we see people who are a lot more into fitness and in general people drink a lot less alcohol and that's definitely against the stereotype of Ukrainians uh, and it's definitely very different to 10 years I remember 10 years ago it was very typical you go out at night out here and basically girls would get pretty drunk they wouldn't be falling around and vomiting not that kind of English Irish style that I saw growing up British and Irish style in um, obviously in the British Isles um, but definitely they got a lot more drunk than today you don't see people drink to excess like before in big cities like Odessa and Kiev young people now I'm not saying of course you're not gonna see alcoholism you're gonna see it rampant especially in smaller towns amongst middle-aged to older people it's more of a uh, likely to see it there than but amongst young people they dress less alcohol and they're fitter but again it's a section of the society and then you have another section of the youth that is overeating and being healthy so it's kind of diverged a good bit that's what I see so there would be uh, two changes that are kind of paradox a bit paradoxical I think uh, are contradictory in a sense but it's two different sections of the society so it's become a bit more um, polarized in that sense so also as a corny is like change number six I would say and I'm gonna make another video about this I'm gonna interview a few chicks about it uh, I think the allure of and this is related to the automatic value point and it decreasing I think girls are number one a lot more traveled than they were 10 years ago now for, in Ukraine I mean the first one the last point two points about you know the weight well that obviously sucks in one way but if you're not interested in women who are plump there's still enough there's still enough slim girls here and there's actually that section that's even fitter I would say probably better looking style everything than they were 10 years ago so I think it depends where in kind of the dating market you are if you're at the top level I think it's actually better here especially if you spend a lot of uh, more time than coming in for a weekend or, or two weeks because that is very tough because you don't have the automatic volume the other thing is there are a lot more trouble now you might say that's good or bad 
really sure. For me, it makes them more interesting. I would say Ukrainians in general, because it's obviously not just girls. Also, the guys travel a good bit more. Uh, so if you have guy friends here, if you move there, also can relate to you, because they've probably been to the West and traveled around a bit. This wasn't really the case 10 years ago, unless they had a lot of money. What are the big changes? Well, they got visa free to Schengen a couple of years ago. So now they can spend basically six months a year in uh, the Schengen zone, which is most of the European Union, actually excludes Ireland. Uh, which is annoying if your Ukrainian uh, girlfriend wants to visit you in Ireland because then you have to go to the house of getting a visa and uh, yeah, that's just extra work to have to go through. Uh, and they have visa free to a lot more countries around the world. Now, they don't have visa free to America yet and that might be a good bit off, but they do have, I think to Canada, do they have visa free? And uh, Middle East, for example, and a lot of other countries in the Balkans, like Albania has become quite popular to go to. Greece has become quite, well, that's obviously in Schengen, but we'll say Albania, Montenegro, uh, are, you know, Egypt, uh, Turkey. So there are a lot of places that they can go and travel to. And as a result, they get out a good bit more, see the world. So they're not as sheltered as I felt uh, they were. And that actually made relationships a lot more difficult 10 years ago because, you know, they just had no there were less relatability points because they hadn't really traveled. Uh, so if you're coming in for a short trip 10 years ago, and if you're going to try to have a relationship with over a long period, then yeah, or even over a short period, it was, it was, it was a lot more of a gap uh, between, I think, relatability on the relatability uh, side than there is today. And a lot of results, just Instagram and culture has become a little, good bit more with the internet and with Instagram and whatnot, a lot more homogenized uh, today than it was 10 years ago. So even though I said that the American dream kind of, or maybe even a Western European dream has declined a bit in the last 10 years as attractive, as being attractive, on the flip side, definitely girls here in the big cities in Ukraine, even the small towns, they speak a lot more English than they did 10 years ago. That is a massive change. I remember when I came here, I remember when I came here in 2011, and it was a struggle outside of a restaurant. It was a struggle if you went to a bar or a club uh, and you started talking to the local girls. It was, you know, I just started learning Russian really at the time. It was a real struggle. That's part of the reason why I learned Russian. And I just got so much practice because very few women spoke uh, decent English here back then. Now, I don't want to exaggerate and say that this is, uh, you know, a place where you can just come with English and everything is going to be hunky-dory because it's not. Uh, and I know I've mentioned in other videos that this is the part of Europe with the lowest English uh, as a second language skills, along with Russia and along with Belarus. Uh, so don't come thinking it's going to be Amsterdam or Stockholm and you can just use English and you don't have any problems and even, you know, Babushka out in the village will understand you. No, it's not like that. It's just a big change. It's gone in that direction. I would think that, yeah, it's kind of with my clients a bit of a 50-50 in terms of whether they're able to communicate English when they come here with any given girl on the street. Uh, but there are a lot of problems still, especially for ordering restaurants, getting things, you know, just in general, especially if you live here a couple of months of the year and you have to get a lot of things organized, you're probably going to need an assistant to help you in the beginning uh, if you don't speak Russian or Ukrainian. Uh, but it is on an upward trajectory and Ukrainians, especially younger Ukrainians, are learning more English. Uh, so that is another big change. I think we're up to is it number seven? So that's good and bad, um, I guess. Uh, if you already invested in learning Russian, that they can speak English is not really that much help to you and they can speak to, I mean, if you're talking about the dating market, then they can speak to the other guys who don't speak Russian because re speaking Russian is a big advantage in terms of access, obviously, if people don't speak good English. Uh, so anyways, that's it. The English level has definitely gone up, but it's still lagging way behind the rest of Europe will say, but that's also because the level, English level in say France has dramatically changed in the last 10, 20 years. I remember being there 20 years ago and very few people spoke English then. I think that's very different when you go there today. Uh, it's also why I learned French <laughs> because I kind of had to when I was hanging out there. Yeah, it's about 20 years back. So the, I think we're up to eighth change. It's the local guys in Ukraine. Not only have the local girls improved their style, and maybe you don't think it's improved their style, but become a little bit more like in the West or become more internationalized. Also, the local guys have upped their game. And the kind of disheveled uh, post-Soviet image of a, you know, the Russian or Ukrainian guy, it's not really um, like that nowadays in big cities, right? So in Kiev or in Lviv or in 
Odessa or in Kharkiv, especially you go to the cooler quarters of the city, people, guys also dress uh, a lot more sharper or a lot more cooler uh, than they did 10 years ago. And I think in general, they've upped their game. They're more of uh, competition for you as well when you come here uh, because while well, they have advantages of living here <laughs> and speaking the language and they definitely uh, in terms of their appearance and grooming and whatnot that definitely to me looks a lot better than it was 10 years ago uh, you know I like to joke in my videos that I've done before about whether looks matter here uh, and I'll link those uh, down below again maybe up in a card if I have space but you know pretty boys from the West they tend to underperform here because looks are just not as important as they are in the West and uh, you know I've often heard guys who are good looking successful women in the West when they come here they see the local guys and they say oh there's so many guys here punching above their weight well they didn't see it 10 years ago because <laughs> they were punching even more above their weight uh, than they are now so again remember uh, more guys are not just the girls but also more guys are into fitness nowadays they guys probably also drink a less alcohol it seems that way uh, definitely girls do so they are also improving their value and economically there's a certain class of younger guys who are doing very well with IT here so that's uh, uh, change number eight in case a bit more competition from the local guys so change number nine is Ukrainian is spoken a lot more in 2021 in Ukraine than it was in 2011 obviously we had the Euromaidan revolution a bit more patriotism maybe on the linguistic front uh you know with the obviously obviously with the conflict with russia with crimea ben annex and also the low level conflict in donbass and also the periodical issues with russian troops on the border like we had earlier this year um russian is definitely less spoken overall in the country than or in terms of you hearing it or seeing it than it was 10 years ago. I also have a video about you know whether you can learn Russian in Ukraine today. I'll link that up above and down below if you're interested in coming here just to learn the language. Now I don't want to exaggerate and say no one speaks Russian of course we're here in Odessa and in Odessa the lingua franca of the city is Russian. It's what you're going to hear everywhere but I'm just looking at an ad for a taxi service and it is of course in Ukrainian. Now a lot of things were written in Ukrainian and you would hear Ukrainian uh, especially in Lviv in the West and a bit in Kiev 10 years ago, but now you hear it a lot more. So you could say that in a lot of parts of the country, probably the main language in it, if you go you know, fast forward another 10 years, uh, it's probably going to be Ukraine. I'm not going to say that's going to be the case here in Odessa uh, because um, it seems a long, long way. I rarely hear Ukrainian on the streets here. Similar, you know, in Kharkiv or in Dnipro. Uh, I don't think it will change that fast, but in Kiev already, I'm seeing big changes on the linguistic front. And, you know, if you're starting off like I did, learning Russian first, which is what you should do because you can use Russian, obviously, in Russia. And uh, it's an international language, language of the UN, you know, obviously Belarus, is lingua franca in the former Soviet Union, obviously makes more sense unless you're living in, say, Lviv or an actual Ukrainian speaking city. So just be aware of that. that yeah, Ukrainian is on the up and Russian percentage-wise probably on a little bit of a decline here. But yeah, that's what I see in the last 10 years, but maybe not something to get too carried away with. It's not going to change that quickly if you move here to Odessa. So I want to round off this video with change number 10. Now, it kind of doves, dovetails back with what I had as change number two, and but I want to put a more positive slant on it in this sense that you know I look at the economy I look at the energy of the country the direction of the country and you know when I came here in 2011 and obviously before I didn't feel like Ukraine was on an upward trajectory economically or just as a place like I didn't think of moving here for example I mean obviously the world was a bit different 10 years ago with obviously remote work or you know m working um, you know from here or running a business from here and that kind of stuff and also price level is a bit different uh, but I didn't feel like the country was you know the country of the future in Europe or something like that I went to countries in Central Europe and they were on the up like Poland for example uh, although I didn't really enjoy my time there I did think that wow this place is really booming with energy that it's going forward uh, Ukraine just seemed very stagnated at the time they had had a revolution back in 2004 um, but 
yeah, it didn't seem like it changed a lot. I mean, I hadn't been here in 2004. It's hard for me to tell other than the fact that they got rid of uh, as, me, me as, a, as a Westerner needing a visa. It didn't really seem like a lot had changed. Uh, now, looking at Ukraine and seeing the energy in the country, in particular as a place to actually move and spend a lot of time in, I think that is the biggest change that I see 10 years on. It feels like this country is going forward and it is moving and it is progressing. You know, I see a lot of positive changes. I'm not going to say, say everything is positive has <laughs> changed, but definitely in terms of the economy and the direction of the country, it seems to be going, you know, obviously not in a straight line, not high speed, but definitely going in the right direction in terms of providing a better quality of life if you come here yourself and spend a lot of time here. And I definitely wouldn't have said that back in 2011. So I think that's a positive note to end this podcast on in terms of the changes. Now, uh, we could have talked about a lot more, especially in light of the coronavirus mess. I'm obviously making this video in July 2021. And uh, yeah, we've just seen what happened in Western Europe or a lot of other parts of the West, just the globe. I can't just say it's all in the West, but uh, yeah, they've been locked out. I was on the phone to my father today about Ireland and man, they, they're not, you can't sit inside restaurants yet. So I think actually the last, you know, 18 months of this travel chaos and these lockdowns that we've seen in other places have definitely made Ukraine even more attractive. Now I know neighboring Belarus also didn't have that you know, that many issues and probably Russia a bit less as well. Uh, but definitely this has been a place where I think I felt uh, that probably most Europeans have felt the freest in all senses of the word, but all combined politically and in terms of our own personal liberties in the last 12 months. So definitely something to bear in mind if you are considering a trip here to Ukraine uh, this summer, in the future, or maybe even taking the plunge and moving this direction. Uh, maybe it's going to be in Odessa Mama. So obviously that is a nice segue into my program where I help high level guys with the consultation group called Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine. Basically, I help you figure out residency, how you're going to stay longer than 90 days visa free here. Uh, real estate market is a huge thing. I've been working on that quite a bit and I'm going to have some more content here on the channel as well. But and I'm always updating that in the program. Uh, as more of the guys from the first two seasons actually come here and move to Ukraine uh, and start, you know, buying property and stuff. Uh, also helps me learn a good bit more about the real estate market here so I can help you uh, when you join it. Uh, healthcare, really, really important if you're going to live in a country, you're going to go through that. Also business opportunities here in Ukraine, you know, a lot of things that have worked in the West, been validated, haven't been actually implemented here yet. There is some very good opportunities. On top of that, we go into overcoming the language barrier because as I mentioned, even though English is more widely spoken here than 10 years ago, it's still an issue that you need a solution to. So we go into that and we also outline, you know, the big advantages and overall the quality of life that you're going to enjoy by coming here for three to 12 months a year because it's not for everybody the winter here. I actually like the cold. <laughs> Um, I just don't like the rain and that is something that I grew up with on the west coast of Ireland so I don't mind if it's minus 25 personally but I realize it's not for everybody. I have a good friend who uh, basically disappears every year when the weather comes coming and then he's like a swallow is it or he's like a migrating bird he comes back when the weather is good he showed up about three weeks ago here. Uh, so that could be you you could be like that migratory bird who comes to Ukraine just for the summertime and actually has another pad another nest over maybe in a warmer climb maybe in Latin America very good combination I think uh, for a lot of guys uh, to do for you to think about if you are that way inclined anyways there's a link to that below it's on demand I will open it up also for the live sessions in the future probably only in a few months time but in any case if you're interested it's on demand and obviously you get access to me as well so uh, as I like to say at the end of these videos, even though I didn't film in the sunlight, in the very nice soft sun because they actually closed off the other side where the sun was. Uh, the police, I think there's some military exercises going on in Odessa today. I see some, a lot of sailors and some airplanes uh, flying overhead, some uh, fighter jets. Uh, I'm going to bid you a dopobachna disvidanya from Odessa Mama. Still, 
Scam Central, that hasn't changed in the last 10 years, but still a fantastic place to consider coming to either for a short trip or for a longer period. So see you very soon in the next video. And of course, comment below if you have noticed uh, changes that I didn't talk about in this video or you don't agree with some of the things I outlined, you don't think that it's actually really changed, it's all just an illusion, then let me know down below in the comments to this video. See you very soon in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Sar Experience.